We are at Uari National Forest doing the OHV trails, and uh, this is our Jeep Gladiator that we feature on our channel. Um, most of our videos involve our dog and our Jeep Gladiator, and sometimes our camper. Um, that's sort of like the, the main part of the channel. So anyway, so today is a off-road day where we're um, exploring in the campers back at the side camper. That right there is a map of where we are and what we've done. So this is going to be kind of a highlights reel of the green trails. So I'll, I'll give you a list of which ones we are hitting today, and it's most of them. Wolf Den, Slab Pile, Rocky Mountain Loop, Sawmill, Falls, and Falls Dam are the green trails that we're doing today. And then uh, when I say green, I mean beginner or um, like three or four level um, introductory kind of trails. There are a couple little spots that you'll see that they're spotting, but most of the spots that you see here, um, you can just kind of go right around. Um, there are lots and lots of bypasses here. The only trails um, that are kind of like important trails that we are not doing today is Daniel and Dickie Bell. And Dickie Bell is a badge owner, and Daniel's the, the most difficult one that they have here. And we'll do that. We did those, um, but they'll be in a different video. And then um, also the Dutch John Trail has a video of its own that probably is already posted by now. So this um, looks probably nasty compared for some of the beginners. But if you notice that, that uh, where that Jeep, uh, Toyota was, you can just go right around it. So people are here because they want to be here. People are on these rocks because they want to be on these rocks. And that's uh, the theme of a lot of URI where they don't really have that many spots where it's difficult and you're forced to, 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 to do it. Um, this is all like optional. I think Lawrence, who's driving here, was the only person who decided to go over this obstacle. I'm pretty sure everybody else or nearly everybody else went around it. This was a way that every, almost everybody went up, um, what you're seeing here. And that was by choice. It wasn't because um, anybody was forced to go this way. You could have just gone straight, like I was saying, where you saw that, that Yoda, and you could just go right around this obstacle. The left side is the, the medium kind of um, level of the obstacle. The path that's kind of directionally toward where the camera's like kind of looking at, at this Jeep, that would be the more difficult route. This, for the most part, is going to be, like I was saying, a highlights reel. You're only going to see sections of trails. You're not going to see every obstacle on every trail. Um, I've done the videos the other way also, and I just decided that this time I, w I wasn't going to do that. Um, if you want to see this trail in its entirety, you can see one of the videos I posted last year when we were here, where I actually posted the entire video, like trail, like every single rock on the entire trail. So you can see here she's stuck on a, uh, a rock. And so the general idea when you... Um, when you go over these obstacles, um, if you're a beginner, and I think this was the first time they took their Jeep out, is you basically try to make these little V's. And so essentially what I mean by that is you find the biggest obstacles on the trail that are in the way and you put them on the tire. So here, like the example, um, the tire that's close to us needs to be more on the, on the large rock. So then um, it'll raise her up. And the general idea is like that doesn't belong between the tires. It belongs like on one of the tires. So what we're doing here is we're going to um, just tug her off the obstacle. And so the technique that uh, that I was taught to do is basically the person that is in the front Jeep needs to kind of be driving. So that means that their tires need to be moving and they need to be trying to get off the obstacle. That way their Jeep is kind of helping with a winching or helping with the, with a tugging. Um, and once we get them to move just a little bit, um, the general idea is the tires take over. That's that's generally what, what you want. and you want this, the driver to actually be trying to actually get off the obstacle when you give them a the little tug. So then, you know, they kind of expect the movement versus just feeling like they're being jerked. Um, and whatever you do, you do not have the brakes on or, or have it in park or anything like that. That's sort of like the, the, like the worst idea, basically. And so you can see here she's trying and then a little tension, a little tension. And I'm backing up because, and uh, there you go. You can see that uh, um, she's off the obstacle and uh, now we are going to get her um, essentially like up the up the um, the little difficult spot and then we'll move on so this is obstacle and uh, like i was saying i mean this is totally something that you do not have to do and, and you can see that like wonderful flex that she has there um, essentially what you're seeing is this weight bar is disconnected um, because she has a Rubicon, she probably pushed a button. And uh, you can see how low the, the tire is hanging. And normally when you drive on the highway, it will not allow itself to, to go that low. 
um, and the reason for that is you know so you don't tip over or anything like that when you're when you're going fast but when you're off-roading it's good to have that so you can see the difference here she goes right over the obstacle no problem at all and that's because she just made the the very minor little adjustment of making that little V um, to basically get the tires um, on the bigger obstacle and so this is Kimberly driving and so we're gonna try to do the same thing um, but I didn't really brief her ahead of time so you'll see um, like basically the same thing happens but it, it's not anywhere near as bad um, so this is the our Jeep Gladiator it still has the stock 33 inch tires that came from Jeep it's um, the suspension has been slightly modified where we have the two inch lift um, the, but it's a Mopar lift and then also we have the, the armor other than that everything else is um, the same so I'm standing here holding the camera and just kind of pointing her on what to do and so the general idea is I want her to make the little V on those rocks but apparently um, I didn't get her in the right spot and she missed it just by a couple inches now you can see the difference is um, I think that she's sort of sitting on her skid plates so that's a good thing that means and I'm, basically we just need to get her to turn the wheel a little bit once she gets to the right spot and and like I was saying like you want to get it so the wheels are like on those rocks and the V is like between the tires as you can see here and this will be like pretty perfect so you can see now she clears it and the other thing that was really great is the fact that the the rear tires tracked um, where the front tires were so that's 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 the name of the game, making little V's. So you'll um, get a chance to see some different people go through um, this obstacle. Um, this is probably one of the more interesting obstacles um, on the, the easier trails at Uari. Obviously this is a pretty long video, so there's other obstacles that you're going to see too. It's not just going to be this. Now the rock rails he has there with the side steps, um, I absolutely do not recommend that. What's going to happen is at some point he's going to get caught on one of those side steps and then the cho choice is going to be basically destroy the side step or uh, not get unstuck and, and uh, um, basically he's going to destroy a side step. The little V thing, that was perfect that he did there like to get up there. You saw he didn't like he made the turn just right at the right time. So the difference that you can see here is the front tires are moving, but the rear um, are not, which means like one of the rears is not, which means that basically this guy has open differentials. It means he does not have lockers. Um, the other Jeeps that weren't sliding here probably had their lockers on. I don't know. I didn't ask him really to turn them on, but maybe she turned them on. Um, but you can see here the difference, like where uh, you know, essentially, if if you're a little like you don't know what I'm saying. When you when you're in two wheel drive, you're really in one wheel drive, and only one wheel at a time can move. When you're in, in four-wheel drive, then one of the front tires can move and one of the rear tires can move, and it'll be whichever one that does not have traction that can move the easiest, unfortunately. And so the hope is that like, if one of them in the front and one of them in the back is moving, hopefully both of them, either in the front or the back, have some traction and you're good. Um, but you can definitely see the difference in the, in the wheel speed here. Um, and you'll see he, he made it right up at no problem. Probably what happened is the traction control kicked in a little bit and helped out. And that's one of the big differences between the JK and the JL, and people don't really talk about that much. Um, traction control. In the in when you put it in for low, the little light turns on that says that the traction control is turned off, when in fact it's still on. And uh, this is a completely different side way of wheeling, um, if you didn't notice. And so anyway, um, on the the JLs, the track and the JTs, like the the newer ones, the traction control is much more aggressive. It kicks in almost immediately. On the JKs, like the, usually there's like a five or 10 second delay between it, it, it kicks in. And even in four low, it's on, it just diminished. Um, it takes longer for it to kick in. So th this is probably um, the stereotypical um, off-road person that you'd kind of expect to, to see um, if you didn't know better about like, um, you know what you're doing. It's like just all about the gas. Um, and you can see he's just gassing it. Um, and he's doing that on purpose to have fun, kind of. Um, I think he knows like that it would be a mid, much easier to make it up here without so much throttle, but you know, then it wouldn't be quite as much fun. 
So some people um, that when they're out here, they bring their um, expensive shiny Jeep out here, kind of like like us, and then you're very protective of it and you're trying to to um, to baby it sort of. And then you have other people out here that uh, have like something that is far less expensive, and then they just like kind of like beat it up and and uh, they they are a little more aggressive. I guess it's kind of a little bit like the difference between the uh, um, the side by side community um, or ATV community. In the Jeep community, you see um, a little, them being a little more aggressive with their stuff because um, it's a little bit, I think, less expensive to repair, to repair stuff. Although some of the side-by-sides can get incredibly expensive, um, obviously. So he went like a completely different route than everybody else, which is totally fine. Uh, basically, he found a, um, an even easier way to get around that obstacle. So the whole vi um, video is not just going to be the same obstacle, by the way. Um, it's just we have a lot of kind of really interesting footage around this one obstacle, so that's why there's so much footage of, of this obstacle. So this is a, um, a slightly different path than the path that you just saw. We were on the left of this. This is the middle path, and, and this middle path I think is a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm not really sure. The obstacles look a little bit larger. And here he's just showing off how much clearance he has. Um, those are probably 37 inch tires if I had to take a guess, and he just went right over the boulders. And uh, here, the brand new 37s that he just put on, but you can see how deep it is in the wheel well, and you saw like, um, he was like touching the bumper and touching the wheel well a little bit. He just needs a little bit of bump stop and maybe um, pull the wings off the bumper and then um, like look at that right there. That is a good, good example. Like that is just way too much in the in the bumper like with with those big ass big tires like and right there there's a piece of the fender on the ground. He made it up there. He just needs a little bit of bump stop and then of course you have. Other people out here too, and he was on the exact same trail, just going up it. Um, I, I went, went out with uh, one of those when we were at Big Dogs, and it was actually quite amazing. At Big Dogs, they were just kind of going around obstacles. So this is Poser Rock. These guys were ahead of us. All kinds of people get on this rock. I just wanted to show to you, like, show you what Poser Rock is. And uh, like I was saying, like everybody gets up on it, and uh, um, everybody also brings their fur baby out here. It's always like always fun to bring uh, to bring your friends out here and uh, to bring your dog out here. That's like always like what this is kind of about. So since we were having some downtime, I collected some wood out here while we were uh, spotting people over obstacles and stuff because you can just pick up wood that's lying on the ground. Um, wood, that's totally legit. Um, and uh, so now we're at the soup bowl. The soup bowl is basically a a little mud pit that they have. Um, on the edge of one of the parking lots and some people like to go through the obstacle and some people don't and that's Grace, um, obviously the mascot for our channel. So we have two Jeeps I believe that are going to go through the Super Bowl that we're going to ha um, have on video. And wh what do you know, like the same exact uh, uh, Jeep that we just had uh, um, a few minutes ago. This Super Bowl right here is very very shallow right now. Um, it gets deep enough that you know you can completely submerge a vehicle, um, and you can see the kind of like the markings on the ground of the water line and how how small it is or low it is, so to speak. She was getting out because she was getting wet, um, like a lot of the older Jeeps. From my understanding, there was a, a section missing from the floorboard, and the water was just like literally coming in. Uh, um, the floorboard. So here he comes again uh, for another um, pass. Just he's just playing around in the water.
So this is another one of the obstacles um, that we had here at URI. And like I was saying, th these are the easier trails um, that we're on, or the, the green level trails. And you can see here the, um, the obstacles are, are far smaller than the tires. Um, they're basketball size at the biggest, let's just say, but there's not that many of them and you can just drive around the basketball size ones. Um, so the ones that you absolutely have to go over are going to be these softball size ones. So as you can see, I mean, going down is actually pretty easy. The gravity just sort of helps you out. Um, the main thing that we're concerned with here, though, is his rocker rails. Like I was saying, like the little side steps, um, we're just concerned with um, the fact that he might touch one of them. Where if it was somebody that just had like kind of the flat ones, um, it would be less of a concern because they're more uh, protective if they're flat. And you're and I'm just like watching right now, and it, he didn't touch, so that's good. So I'm going to include a little bit of the footage from the inside of the Jeep also, just so you can get a little taste of uh, what is here. So these are the mud humps. Um, like I was telling you, the mud humps are, are uh, um, all over this trail. Um, the, although you didn't see them earlier, um, they are here. And uh, as you can see, the the, the sidewalls, that's kind of the, the well-known uh, URE look and feel. So there's a little bit of a traffic jam ahead of us um, on this obstacle or set of obstacles, um, but um, that's sort of what happens here. Um, the really good stuff, there always seems like there's a lot of people wanting to go there. And then the, the stuff that's a little more boring um, is usually where um, there's fewer people that you can find, that you, that you uh, run into. So for us, this was not very slippery. It looks like it should be slippery, um, but it, it wasn't. It did rain uh, two days prior. Um, it wasn't raining when we got here. This is a completely different part of the trail. Obviously, we just jumped to a different part of the trail. And like I was saying, I'm just trying to give you a little kind of highlight reel of the flavor um, of these trails that we did. And if you had forgotten, it was Wolf Den, Slab Pile, Rocky Mountain Loop, Sawmill, in uh, Falls Dam, so this is the, the basically the highlights of five um, of the trails that they have here. Once again, you can see those high side walls um, and the, the red kind of clay mud um, that's really well known at URE OHV. The obstacles, um, as, as you can see, um, size-wise, um, are smaller than basketballs, so this is definitely um, an easier trail. If you're from Northern Virginia and trying to figure out like, well, how difficult is this really? Um, it probably is on there, up there with like the flagpole knob like type trail. Um, some of this is probably similar to um, the Union Spring side of flagpole knob, very similar to like Dictum, very sim similar to Second Mountain. If you're from the Pennsylvania area, this would be probably a green trail at Anthracite Outdoor Adventure area. It might be a blue trail at uh, Roush Creek. Um, the colors don't match, by the way. Um, yeah, like I know. And uh, I don't really know enough about Redding. Um, the stuff that I've done at Redding in Pennsylvania um, was the easier stuff. So it, I would say maybe it's pretty similar to the easy stuff at Redding. There's another one of mud humps. It also um, is pretty similar to the easier trails at Winrock if you're from Tennessee, and uh, I don't I don't recall offhand the, the trail numbers at Winrock. I was there for a whole week. I should remember the trail numbers. I, I just I just don't. There are lots of other um, people out here, but so far everybody for the most part has seemed fairly um, friendly. There's always a couple little jerks here and there. Um, but overall, it seemed like it was a very positive experience. And uh, overall, it seemed like a lot of people were willing to, to help out, um, which was good. And when I say help out, like if you were struggling, like they would holler at you and kind of tell you what to do. Um, there was one spot um, on one day where we had somebody behind us that was on, um, that had just joined our group that was kind of just following along with us. And he got stuck and I had to get out to, to go spot him. 
but the person that was standing there just spotted him before I even got back there, which was really nice, so I didn't have to um, just spot him, just somebody else kind of was helping out. Anyway, so um, like I was saying, if you have any questions about these trails or where obstacles are and stuff, um, I will try my best to answer questions. Um, if you just like leave them below, like like which one which one of these trails is which. Um, this is pretty much a mashup of the footage, but I still have all of it. And you can see here, there's a little step here. Um, it's not a very big step, and uh, we're just gonna just kind of hop down it, and then we're gonna continue going. So uh, anyway, we'll see you, and uh, please uh, like and subscribe, uh, and let us know. Thank you.